My name is Lisa Carney. I am a finisher, designer, retoucher, and educator. I've been doing this for something like 30 years. And I have to tell you, almost no job goes by without me implementing frequency separation. I am really looking at expanding how you use frequency separation. So let's talk about this. It's always been a tool in my arsenal for beauty work. But I was, you know, I was at Photoshop World once years back with Joel Grimes and suddenly something clicked in my head and I realized that aside from just the image and using frequency separation, I could bring separate elements from all sorts of areas. For example, cloth fabric, skin texture, body shapes, that sort of thing. And once that entered my mind, my goodness, uh, it, frequency separation just blew up for me. And this is what I'd like to impart with you. So I use it on nearly every job, as I said, and now anymore, it's just something I quickly do. I have actions that set up a frequency separation folder and I do my little bit and then I merge it and I merge it down into my retouch and I keep on going. So it's not quite so precious. I'm hoping to have that experience for you. So we need to get on the same page here. So first of all, let me tell you, we're going to be looking at frequency separation, how to expand its use by looking at skin texture, you know, when the image is blown out and you need to add skin texture or when someone's existing skin texture isn't very nice and you want to change it up a little bit. We're also going to look at adding textures to fabric and changing that. This gets really exciting. And then we're going to look at a couple different solves kind of difficult solves to see how you might be able to implement frequency separation in your workflow. Mm -hmm. We have to get on the same page here though on how we're doing frequency separation. What I mean by that is there's a lot of different methods people use to create their frequency separation folders. If you haven't already, please watch the basic frequency separation course I have because it'll explain my personal recipe so that you can follow along. But shortly or simply I could say I use Gaussian Blur and I use apply image. Everyone uses that. And I'm going to be giving you three actions in this course that you can use. One is a basic frequency separation, intermediate, and the three Ds. I'm going to explain that as we continue on so that you don't get confused as to what the process is, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I often almost always call my blur or gray layer, pardon me, my blur color layer is my low frequency. I don't like the words low frequency nor high frequency. My brain just doesn't deal with them very well. So the gray layer is gonna be the high frequency where the detail lives. This is presuming y'all understand basic frequency separation. If you don't, stop now and come back later. Loading the actions I'm gonna provide for you is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Either drag the action to the icon for your application or go through the menu item on the actions and load actions. It's really easy. Let's get started. All right, to get started, let's do a little experiment so I can really explain the blur layer versus the gray or texture layer. So right here, I have three shots. I have a mesh that a basic frequency separation has been done where the item is separated into the blur and the, the gray. A leather, the same thing, the basic frequency separation's been run and I've got the blur layer and the gray layer. And then the hero, denim, is again, a blur layer and a gray layer. So what happens if we are on the gray layer for the denim and we turn that off and we bring in the texture alone from the leather? Look what happens here. You now have leather skin texture on denim which is a whole nother thing, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna throw that away. Let's go to the leather. And again, what happens if we turn off the gray for the leather? We go to the denim and we drag the texture of the denim over to the leather. Now we have a texture of denim on top of the leather. However, what you may notice is because the tev the texture and tone, there's a little bit on the leather base. So I'm gonna turn the denim gray on top of that back on so you can see it. And what I realize is I need to actually blur the, the leather more so that the texture reads. And this is really, really important when you're thinking about combining images because sometimes the blur that you had done might not be enough. So let's take this mesh and I'm gonna go take the mesh detail and bring it onto the denim. Now that's pretty cool. 
And sometimes what you might need to do is double it up. I'm going to go Command J and put an extra one. Now I have more texture. What happens if we do the opposite? I'm going to throw those two away. I'm going to turn the denim texture on and drag that over onto the mesh. Okay, so now let's look, do it before and after. That's before and that's after. And maybe that'll get you what you need, but do you see what happens on the blur of the mesh? You still have that kind of textury tone there. So you might need to be careful with that or simply on the blur layer for the mesh, I'm going to my Gaussian blur. Maybe blur the heck out of it. And then we're left with denim. See that? There's a denim texture. This is super, super important when we're considering things like skin and fabric and changing the textures. Sometimes, as you see here, you might want a combination. So sometimes with clothing or product jobs, I have the original mesh, but then I put the denim on top and I get a third possibility here. So it's going to be some combination, but it's pretty exciting. And this is where the power comes from frequency separation. So consider things like skin, fabric, or creating things from nothing. Let's take a look. Here's our first fabric combination. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine this terry cloth and this mesh onto this fabric. So I can show you two different techniques. So. How you start out is my basic formula, which is two copies of the layer. You shift click the names, put them in a folder, call them FS. Again, I presume you've already taken the basic course here. The bottom copy, we're going to call it blur and I'm going to blur it. Let's say seven, Gaussian seven. And the top one is going to be the gray. If I could spell. Okay. So Gaussian blur seven filter blur Gaussian blur for this size file, seven. And the gray, we're gonna go to image, apply image, select that gray layer, the blur layer, pardon me, subtract, scale to 128. This is the basic recipe, it's in the handout. The gray layer must be put on the mode called linear light. Now when we turn that FS or frequency separation folder, the image should look exactly the same. So just so we're on the same page, this is basic frequency separation started. So I'm going to throw that folder away because I've already done it. And in addition, I want to let you know, you're going to have these actions, the basic frequency separation. I'm going to pull that out for a second and go back to layers. If I click on that action, bingo, Photoshop did it for you. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm going to go ahead and throw that away because I've already started this for us. So here on our basic frequency separation, I have the blur and I have the gray. But what you'll notice here, what I've done is I've made a copy of just the blur layer. And how I did that is I cut a channel or a mask earlier to save us some time. And on the blur layer, I hit Command J and that gives me a copy of the blur layer, right? But to do this technique, we need to obfuscate or blur it just a little more. So then I just ran another filter, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's say I'm going to put 20. And that's just going to blur it a little more so that we can change the texture. Okay. So that's what we have here. We have a copy blur and we have the gray layer. All right. So the fabric looks a little funny right now. You'll notice because I have that extra blur on there. Don't panic. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. When you're doing this process, it's often easier if you've already masked out the area. So like I said, I made a mask for this area here. I'm going to go ahead and select that mask in the channels and put it on my frequency separation folder and click add a mask. That way we are only looking at the fabric that we're trying to change. So we won't get confused. So what I want to do is I want to try with the mesh first. So here is the mesh and I've already done the basic frequency separation on this. So as I said earlier, what we are going to do is we're going to take the gray layer for the mesh, which is the texture. See that texture? And we're going to put it 
inside the frequency separation for the clothing. I'm going to hold the move or V key and I can move it and put it in position. So now, well, well, in two seconds, I have already changed the mesh, changed the fabric into mesh, which is pretty amazing. However, I do want to call something to your attention. When you get do frequency separation, that gray layer still has a little color from the original. And if you look at that mesh, that original color is a very deep green. So you want to do a hue saturation or command or control U, and you want to take the color out of that gray layer. Do you see that? That way there's no color contamination from the original. And now I'm going to go back, zoom back so we can see the original. And so far I'm liking it. And the only area I see some trouble is right up here on the top. Do you see this? It's really white. I'm going to turn that off and on. So I'm going to be on the mesh copy. I'm going to add a layer mask. Oops. I'm going to be on the mesh copy. I'm going to add a layer mask. And I'm just going to take the gradient tool, set on black, and just draw a little gradient on the mask. Do you see that right there? And this is just going to make this a little more opaque so that it won't look so funny standing out. Now, what I said at the beginning with the original fabric, sometimes, sometimes you might want that original gray layer on there as well. And now I've got a double. There's the original fabric. And now there is the mesh. And I might like the look of that. That gives it just a little more texture. And in about two seconds, two seconds, I have a brand new texture on this fabric. So I'm hoping you can start to see some of the possibilities. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the mesh completely. Now let's try something with the terry cloth. This is going to be a little different and a little more challenging, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So there's my terry cloth image. And this time what I'm going to do, and I want you to follow along here, I'm going to go ahead and close that folder. I'm going to drag that whole folder down into my frequency separation. And turn it on again so you can see it. Oh, you can't see it. Why? Because it's masked. No big deal. I'm going to grab the folder called Terry, and you can see it off here in the corner, and I'm going to drag it so it's now in position. So let's say that is the position we like. I think that looks pretty good for positioning, but it's certainly not the result I want. So let's do what we did with the mesh. First, we're going to do the texture. And the texture is pretty cool, but it looks a little flat, doesn't it? It doesn't quite have the depth that the terry cloth had. So in this section of the technique, you're going to do one more step. Follow along. I'm going to grab that terry cloth blur layer and drag it down below. Down below, turn it on. So there's my blur. It looks like a rug on his chest. It's not quite what I want. Well, here's the problem. It's colorizing it, isn't it? There's the color of the shirt. There's the color of the blur. So I'm going to take all the color out, Control or Command U to get my hue saturation. Now I have a gray blur of the terry cloth on top of my fabric. OK, that's still not quite right, is it? No, but we're really close because now all we're going to do is put that on overlay mode. And once we have put that on the mode called overlay, that tone is going to color the shirt blur underneath put the terry cloth grayscale on top and bada bing in two seconds again we have a terry cloth fa fabric on top of the old fabric and it's just such a nice quick way so imagine what if you had a client who had a shirt who you didn't have the complete shirt and you need to paint more fabric here all you have to do is add the texture i know this is a lot to go over but uh, you're going to be able to practice this on your own. I'll include the terry cloth and the mesh as samples for you, and you can practice on your own. But not bad. In just a couple seconds, you actually have a brand new fabric shirt. Give it a try. Keep practicing. And what you want to remember is you've done two steps on the terry. One, you've put the gray scale for the texture. But two, you have to add the tone. And when you add the tone, you need to make sure it's not color contaminating. So you make it grayscale and put it on the mode called overlay. Practice a bit. You're going to really find this helpful. 
A key component to frequency separation working is this notion of what happens when you have grayscale in the layer modes. So let's talk about this. So when you have a grayscale and you put it on the layer mode called overlay, what happens is 50% gray disappears. And where you have black and or white, you have tone. The same is for linear light, only it's more intense. Or soft light, it's less intense. And why this is important is if you look at your frequency separation build and you look at the gray area, most of it is 50% gray, so it's going to disappear and you're simply left with the detail, the highlights and the shadows, which then remain. Or conversely, if you're adding tone and you want to add tone to your file, if you put it on overlay, and I'm going to slide this under the grayscale, that provides tone or shape to your file. This is going to be really important always for frequency separation, but especially as we're doing the skin section. The first exercise we're going to do is using skin, ske skin textures excuse me, from another source. So I'm going to run my basic frequency separation. Here's my file. This is all pretty basic at this point. And now what I'd like to talk to you about is patterns. So I have a bunch of skin patterns I have made human skin, sharp, blurred, rough, pebble board, natural, leather, rough, and soft. These are just different patterns I like to use. I think for this one, I'm gonna use the skin texture blur. And if you notice, what it has done is it's made a pattern fill layer on top of my gray layer. I'm gonna put a black mask on this by holding the option key and clicking. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. And in fact, just for a second, because I can't stand those bags under my eyes, let me do a fast paint. So I'm gonna paint some tone using the gradient tool, just to clean up my face a little bit because I look tired and sad. All right, now as you see, I have the skin texture, which is not looking so good. I have made my pattern fill. That's what it looks like if I have it over the whole piece. I think the size is wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint on the mask for the pattern layer and just see a little sampling of it. Then I'm gonna double click on my icon for my pattern and I'm gonna change the scale. Let's try 80%. That looks better. Let's try 50%. No, I think 60%. And this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna go back and forth on your image until you find one that you think works for you. And then I can paint it in. So obviously this is a bit heavy handed, isn't it? I look like a, a Barbie doll here. However, what you might want to do is leave that pattern, but maybe change the opacity of the pattern to let's say 50% opacity or perhaps 80% opacity. And hopefully what you can see is relatively quickly, you can add skin texture to any shot and paint it in or out wherever you deem necessary. In addition, just to throw one more wrench into this, aside from masking, you can hold the option key and get your blend if sliders up. And with your blend if sliders, you can say, hey, this skin texture, hold the option key and split this. I don't want this to show up where there's shadows. I only want the skin texture where there's highlights. And I'm gonna do a preview off and on. It's subtle, but this is where the good stuff happens. So by using the blend if sliders on top of your pattern layer, you can get some pretty amazing results. These skin textures are gonna be available to you and please try them. Remember that you're gonna to want to check the scale. No scale is perfect. It depends on the size of your image and the DPI. So what do you do when the skin is blown out and you need to add texture? Here comes frequency separation. So again, I'm gonna run the basic frequency. So I have my little set and I'm gonna to go to my, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little better. I'm gonna to go to my gray layer and add my texture. I'm gonna to go to the pattern. I'm gonna take skin texture blur. And I think let's try 25. That might be a good size for this. And I'm gonna link it to my gray layer. So now I can see the texture Hmm, but I don't have any tone on the skin, do I? 
So let me put a black mask on that for a second and just brush in a little bit here so I can see it. So the issue here is not so much texture alone, but it's the tone. So how do you add tone to the skin? Well, oftentimes what folks will do is they'll just do a paint layer and they'll take a gradient tool and they'll start painting in skin tone. But oof, that's gonna take a long time, isn't it? I'm gonna offer you up another solution. And that would be to add a curve adjustment layer, put it on the mode called multiply. And what the idea is we wanna bring down the quarter tones. Okay, well, that's working in the highlight area, but criminy, it's made the whole picture darker. What do I do? Ah, this is where those blend diff sliders, once again, hold the control key, click on the name of your curve, and you get your layer styles or options. And on this, what you wanna say is, hey, once again, I don't want this layer or curve to show up where it's dark, but oh my God, look how spazzy that looks. That's when you hold the option key and split the delta. And you can bring this in and let's take a look at that. Okay, that's much better. And you don't have to hand paint every detail and around every nose. So I'm gonna click okay with that. Every nose, she only has one nose. So now that's looking fairly decent. It's a little intense. So now I'm gonna take down the opacity of the curve, maybe to 80%. But now I have more highlighted. I mean, excuse me, I have more tone in the highlights. And again, I still have this mask, so I can paint it in wherever I want it or paint it out. And now with the skin texture added on the pattern layer, I just need to paint that in. And once again, remember the layer modes allow you to change the opacity of the texture and or the opacity slider. So I can put this on overlay. I could put it on soft light. I think soft light's the one I wanna do. Or I can change the pattern by changing the opacity of the actual layer. So let's review this for a second. What have I done? I have made a basic frequency separation. I've added tone to the highlights using a curve pulling it down, pulling down the quarter tones, and then the very, very important step of using the blend if sliders. Blend if sliders are just amazing. And I'm telling Photoshop, hey, where the image is dark, do not use this curve. And I have a layer mask if I need it. Then like the last exercise, we put, skin texture back in using pattern fill. It's a really simple technique, but boy, it comes in handy. I'd like to talk to you about some of the resources I use for fabrics and for elements to put into my pieces. So one of my favorite places to get pieces is Pixel Squid. They're uh, pretty inexpensive and they have really great resources. So what I got there was I got this gray sweater and this blue sweater. And at Pixel Squid, they also have things like um, sweatshirts, all sorts of items. And if you notice, they've got a nice pattern to them and they have you're able to move them and, and switch them around so you can get different kinds of folding on the fabric, which can be really super helpful. So let's take a look at what we've got here. And per always, I'm gonna start here on my main image. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna use my actions to start my basic frequency separation. There she is. I'm going to utilize a mask I've already made to save some time. So I'm gonna click on my mask and put that on my basic frequency separation. And then that way, this just makes the process a little faster. I like to cut my mask before I start. And let's go ahead and bring in this blue sweater. Now I ran the frequency separation on the blue sweater. I wanna make sure I am on top of my basic frequency separation and just drag it over. One thing you guys may often find when you're bringing in textures is often the color space is not the same. It doesn't matter. Cause really we're just using it for the texture. So what I then wanna do is actually move my sweater into position, basically where I think I'd like it. And then I'm going to pull that blue sweater frequency separation folder into my sweater. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna turn or mask off the blur layer because all I want 
is the texture for this. Well, heck fire. That looks pretty darn good. I cannot tell you how often I use this on product jobs. So I'm going to delete that. Let's do the gray sweater. Same thing. Drag it over. Do not worry about the color space. I'm going to pull it outside of the frequency separation for just a second so I can position it. Now, one thing I often have to do when I use these elements is I have to scale them or move them. So if you notice down here on her hips, the sweater is not quite in position. So I'm going to do a Command T and just pull out the sweater. I'm holding the uh, con Command key as I do this. And then this allows me to change the pattern of the sweater easily and I like to do this outside of frequency separation because I can see it outside of the main folder now just like the blue one I'm going to drag it in mask off the gray layer and look at that you guys look how amazing quickly and easily and this has folds in it too so the pattern undulates a little bit which is fantastic this is really a, a great way of changing product, couches, wallpaper, you name it. Try Pixel Squid as a great resource. Oftentimes clients will ask us to augment body shape, either adding muscle, six pack abs, cleavage, whatever. Here's another resource for using different parts with your frequency separation. I'm going to say we're happy with the sweater frequency separation. I'm gonna go ahead and merge that and I'm gonna move on to the skin to add some cleavage. So I'm gonna turn the sweater off for just a moment and I'm going to run my action to start a brand new frequency separation. And this time it's gonna be for the chest. I'm gonna open that up. Okay, now what the idea here is I wanna add some cleavage. Now I am not a great illustrator, so rather than drawing it by hand, I'm gonna to go to my libraries where I've already downloaded through Adobe Stock a cleavage shine. Now this is not to be salacious you guys, this is just to show you what we have to do. I can't see it in relationship to the body so I'm going to put it on 50% opacity so I can scale and position it. Now let's see, I think it needs to be a little bigger. This can get changed at any time and let's just say at this point I'm happy with this. I'm going to go back to my layers. Now be really clear here. This is for tone, not for detail. So I'm going to drag it into the chest frequency separation, only I'm going to put it under the detail layer. Now I can't see what I'm doing here. So as we've done before, I really like to cut a mask first so that I can do my retouching work unobscured. So I'm going to load my selection, command click on my skin mask and put it on the folder for the chest frequency separation. I'm going to zoom in here and obviously I don't want her chin mucked with so I'm going to put a mask on the new skin I've added and use black and just do a gradient and drag down all right so right now I'm thinking this is looking fairly decent for positioning I can change it at any point using the move tool just so you know but my goodness the color is all off what's a quick way of fixing this this is one of my favorite tricks I'm going to be on the pixel layer for that sexy woman in a swimsuit. I'm going to hold the option key and add a channel adjustment layer. And when that comes up, it gives me a chance to name it. You know I love to name all my layers. I'm going to call that CC skin. And very importantly, I'm going to use previous layer to clip, create clipping mask. So this way, this curve is only going to affect her new skin. All right, so, and what am I trying to do here? Well, I want to make that color skin match her skin. So what, what I need to make sure, this is incredibly important, is that you are on the code, that you're actually on the code for that curve, not the mask. Please make sure you're on this. I'm going to go back to my properties. I'm going to hold the option or control key and click on auto. And that's going to give me a chance to do an auto color correction, only I don't want Photoshop to automatically do it. I want to select it. So I'm going to click Enhance Per Channel Contrast. I'm going to select the shadows and I'm going to go into the picture and pick a dark shadow on her face. So let's see. I'm going to pick that one, but I think I'm going to make it a little darker. Hit OK. The midtone I'm going to leave away, leave alone 50% gray. 
and the highlight, I'm going to pick a highlight on her skin. And look how quickly that has changed to something close to what she's got. I think I might make it a little brighter. Yeah, I think that might be okay. Now I'm going to click OK. And very important when you do this, do not save the new target colors as default. Photoshop knows you don't want to save it, so it automatically highlights the No button. Now let's go back to the layer. and that's getting close that's pretty darn close but it's a little saturated this is a common problem when i'm doing the skin so i'm going to add another adjustment layer of hue saturation and i'm just going to take the saturation down a bit and it's going to cool it down let's go back to the layers i think that looks pretty decent and all in two seconds and at any point you can slide this up or down you can also lower the opacity if they only want a hint of it. I have to do this for hair ads, lingerie ads, clothing ads. It's great for six pack abs as well. So the takeaway here is use your uh, libraries like Adobe Stock, for example. Make sure you're really clear as to where this file needs to be. So I just wanted tone, not detail. The sweater was detail. The boobs are tone. And like that, I've got body parts from someone else dropped in. I'd like to walk through a really difficult solve and dissect it for you to show you how frequency separation could really help you. Now this took a bit of time. This took a couple hours. This is the after, but this is the before. So the client had this photo shoot and decided the tattoo wasn't as cool as they all thought and it needed to come out. I'm going to open up my frequency separation file and actually walk through this process with you. Like I said, it's a, it's a little complicated, but I think you'll understand what happened. So the first part, I have the blur layer down below, right? There's my blur. And then I always make a copy of my blur just in case I make a mistake. And originally I had started to kind of, oh, I don't know, try to blur and paint it. And I realized I'm in deep trouble here. I'm not, it's too much texture to try to paint out. So what I then did was I used a part. So I grabbed an arm from somebody else because I'm not that good of an illustrator. And I dropped that arm in right there and masked it in rather crudely. And that started to get me my form. And then what I did is I added paint on top of it. So let me just show you that paint layer here with nothing else. So that's just some extra paint. So there's the guy's arm and some extra paint on top. Now the color wasn't right. I knew the color wasn't right, so I had some trouble. There's my gray layer. You can see all that detail. So I had to add some color correction on the forearm and on um, some color balance in this area here, just to get the color a little more correct, a little more correct, you'd say that. Now on the gray layer, this is where it got really challenging. So there's my initial gray layer and I started to like clone it out, which was helping, but geez, it was still kind of flat. So what I ended up doing is I ended up putting water drops back in. Can you see that? So I took water drops from another section on this guy and put it on top of the arm. And then I realized the foreground, the forearm needed some hair. So I put some uh, pattern on the foreground to help that out. And I mean, all in all, it's not working, looking too badly. I added some hot white on the top. Again, give some more detail back in. I got that from the original right there. Do you see that hot white right there on the original? So I just put that back in. And then again, the color's a bit off, so I had to do some color correcting on top. So a little bit of darkening. Let me just show you this. It's pretty subtle stuff here. Very subtle. And then a lightning curve. And what that, those two things do are just painting in some tone. Again, some more tone, some lightning tone right here. I added some, the color yellow back in to give it golden. And then I warmed up the skin tone just a little bit, roughly. Sometimes you want those masks to be rough. So the before and after is pretty telling though. That's before and that's after. Now, this is complicated, I, no joke. But what I'm trying to have you take away from it is you can use other body parts from other images 
to help you get started. And then don't forget the little details. Like I'm telling you, the water droplets really make it. That's before and that's after to make it fit into the scene better. So all in all, this took me about two hours and I think it took me two hours more because I had to figure out what to do, not the actual execution. So give it a try, it's pretty interesting. Complicated, but interesting. The last thing I wanna show you about using other elements for now, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg, is what if your client comes to you and says, hey, I've got this color I'd like to use for a, a hand, I'd like to emulate this ad. How would you use something else for color, if that makes sense? So once again, let's go ahead and run our basic frequency separation. And as I've said before, before I do a job, I kind of like to cut a mask for it because it makes it go a little faster for me. Plus it, it makes it easy for me to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put a, ha a mask on for the hands that I just made. And then on the sample color here, I'm just gonna make a copy of that. I'm gonna put it in, actually I'm gonna move it into position first. Again, sometimes that helps me as well. I'm gonna Command T that and just flip it vertically and scale it. It's not gonna fit exactly, of course, but that's all right. This is just to get me started. It's a pretty easy, easy solve here. I'm gonna drag that new sample color underneath the blur. You gotta be really clear where you put your colors, where you put your layers. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start painting and blurring. I get very freeform with all this. So I'm gonna use my paintbrush and just select a color here. I'm gonna go back to that sample color and I'm gonna use the blur tool and I'm just gonna blur this out and see what I get. I'm gonna sample color again. It's very freeform, especially with color. I don't, I don't worry so much about it being exact. Get the blur tool again. Now, one thing you'll notice in this, let me move this hand over, is that the color itself has tone in it, right? Because it's a pickup. So I'm going to have to blur that or get rid of that. So let me go to the gradient tool for a second and just do some blue here. Quick, quick, quick. A little green, a little green here, a little more blue, a little more yellow. So quick, quick, quick. Now I'm on the sample copy. I'm going to call that blur because now I need to blur it. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually use the lasso tool and select chunks of it and hit Command J to copy it. And why I wanna do this is I don't want the yellow to blur into the white of the sample. I just want the color. Make sure you go back down to your sample, Command J. Use your filter again, I'm gonna use that blur. And I don't wanna to have too many layers, so I'm gonna merge those blur, little chunky, chunky, chunkies I've made, as I like to call them. Again, here's the green, Command J, blur. Maybe go back to the paint. Maybe get a brighter yellow, deeper yellow. Need more red, I think. Let me get darker red here. I'm gonna pick my color sample. I mean, literally, it's it's a couple minutes. It's a little too too vivacious, let's just say. There, that that looks nice. And maybe a little more yellow here. So obviously there's some tone in here, no big deal. I could take the smudge tool if I want and smudge that out. All right, let's just say for giggles, we kind of like this color. But now the hands don't look like the sample in that. The sample had some sheen to it. The hands don't have any sheen. So what I can do, I'm going to uh, just make that a color layer. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna zoom back in. And one of the things you can do with frequency separation is you can take the gray layer and just copy it, Command J. And when you've done that, you've doubled up your sharpening because it's on linear light. And that might be something you're looking for. That makes it much brighter. I'm gonna mask that out and actually only paint that in in some areas. So it just has that sharpened look, but not everywhere. And well, that took, what, a minute? Did that take a minute? Minute 30 to do? And this is, again, one of the powers of frequency separation is you can borrow color from another file. 
Phew, that was a lot of information, I know. So let's recap for just a second. We did frequency separation for fabric. You can take a standard t-shirt, make it a terry cloth, make a mesh by combining textures. You can um, do skin textures. So you can just, let's say my skin didn't look so great. You want to use a different texture. You can do that easily. You can add tone and skin texture when there was none, where an area was blown out. This is so handy. You can also do that with fabric, by the way. We didn't demo that, but you can do that with fabric as well. And then we changed uh, body parts. You can add cleavage or six-pack abs by borrowing pieces from other shots. I'm really trying to get it so that you guys can expand how you think about frequency separation and you realize you're not just stuck with cloning what you've got already. And even those hard solves like that tattoo, if your brain can start calculating, hmm, how would I get this done? Maybe frequency separation is the best method for you. And even down to borrowing parts like color, like a, just color from another ad. You just fly it in there and blur it and you can be on your way pretty quickly. So I'm hoping this inspires you to do frequency separation more often and for many, many more things than just beauty. Now, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the actions that you're going to find inside the class and let me explain what they are. So if you look here at the frequency separation, the basic, that's just a blur and a gray. If you don't like the blur amount that the action does, you can change that in the script for the action. Easy to look up on Google. Uh, the second section or the section second uh, action is the intermediate frequency separation. And I use this on jobs where I know I've got to do a little more heavy lifting with frequency separation. So look here, this is what it gives you. It gives you your blur layer, a blank paint layer, so you can just start painting on it immediately. And it already copies that gray layer for you and clips it so that you have a safety copy, as I like to call it. Now the three Ds, what those mean are dust and scratches. And this is a more complicated frequency separation action. And what I mean by that, what it already does is it already creates a dust and blur set at the 40 slash zero for the blur layer. You'll see that there. It gives you a blank layer to paint on. On the gray, it gives you your standard copy to retouch on, but then it gives you three extra layers, and I wanna talk about that for a second. It gives you a dust and scratch that's at seven and seven, which is kind of a light dust and scratch. Then it gives you another one, which is at 10 at three, and that's a little heavier. And then it gives you the color 50% gray on a layer. Now, all three of those are masked out so that if you want them, you can paint them in, but if not, you just throw them away. Now, why is there a blank 50% gray? Well, remember when we talked about layer modes, the color of 50% gray disappears on the mode called linear light. So if you were to paint that in, that will actually take out all the texture. It's a great trick for taking out texture around eyes. You just paint it in with a white paintbrush at a low opacity and it takes out wrinkles beautifully. So I'm hoping you're inspired. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Photoshop Virtual Summit number two. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email me. You can find me at lisa at lisacarney.com. And um, yeah, check out my website. There's all sorts of information there for you and enjoy the rest of the summit.